Hello, everyone. I'm delighted to welcome our classmates to Tiger Night Live 2. I'm Wendy Gerber, and it's great to be with everyone. With, an, with in-person reunion still on hold, I'm really glad that we're able to join virtually for our 40, 41st reunion to celebrate the class of 1980 ties that bind. We'd love for you all to say hello in the chat and share where you're Zooming in from. We know we have classmates on from as far away as Beijing and Tokyo. We're glad to have Sharon Kelt closer to home so she doesn't have to call in and deal with the time frame from Abu Dhabi. I think that's where you were. Uh, uh, and anyway, it's great to see you all. And just to let everybody know, we're recording the Tiger Night Live 2 program although we're not recording the breakout sessions that will follow. Now to get things rolling, our class president, Rich Becker, is going to say a quick hello and give us a few updates. Hi, Rich, it's great to see you. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, our reunion co-chairs, Deb Kushma and Natalie Wargo, and Wendy, our uh, Tiger Chats chair, and her entire team for putting this together. Uh, this is the second consecutive year that we've had to go virtual with reunions, and they've done a fantastic job. They've also done a fantastic job with a number of Tiger Chats throughout the year. So thank you, Wendy, and your team for, for a great job. Um, I just wanted to hi highlight a few things that are coming up for everybody. Uh, June, t <coughs> excuse me, June 10th, we're doing a combined Princeton diversities discussion with the class of 79. Uh, Jenny Korn from the class of 96 is sort of the facilitator for these things, and she does a really fantastic job. So I would really urge everybody to, uh, to sign up for that. Um, June 21st at 8, uh, we have a Tiger Talk, Building a Sustainable World, Green Tech, Clean Energy, and the Way Forward, uh, not moderated by Wendy with our classmates Tom Blum and Rick Anlinger. Uh, July 12th, another Tiger Talk, The Plot. The conversation with renowned writer uh, Jean Half Korlitz, uh, author of You Should Have Known, it, the New York Times bestseller, um, and currently turned into a movie with Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant. And then uh, coming up in September, we're having a mini reunion in Park City. Kim Retrieve and Darren Tilden have done a fantastic job putting this together. All the details are on the class website. So I would really urge everybody to, uh, if you can at all uh, attend, please come because it's going to be a fantastic time. And that's it. Wendy, back to you. All right. Terrific. Thank you, Rich. And we're really glad to have your leadership. And I think Karen has also listed those events in the chat. And Kim is sharing additional information about the Park City Mini Reunion. And you'll all be getting emails about them going forward. So we hope you can join us. And now onto this evening's program. I'm joined by my wonderful fellow MC, Royce Flippin. Hi, Royce. Hey, Wendy. And it is really so great to be here with everyone and see all these familiar faces. It's just a blast. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being here with us. Uh, I just want to take a moment before we go further, Wendy, and congratulate you on your very first grandchild, a baby boy who was born just nine days ago, if I have it right. And I know there's a little bit of uncertainty whether you're going to be able to MC tonight with that family, you know, ha happening going on. Uh, but you're here and it's wonderful to see. Thank you, Royce. Yes, I'm absolutely over the moon about my grandson, Arlo Wolf Peterson. He was born on May 13th and he may just be the newest 1980 class grandchild. And it's an interesting story. My daughter, Samantha, was born on the Wednesday evening for our 10th reunion. And three days later, I was at reunions with her. So it's all come full circle for our 41st, which is really representative of the circle of life. And I'm sure that many of you have grandchildren too. I know Arlene is on who beat me by a few months. She had a grandchild in March. So please feel free to share your news in the chat. And our class secretary, Sharon Keld, is also going to do a paw column on our class's grandchildren in the fall. So please send her an email with info and photos. Karen's putting Sharon's contact information in the chat. And while you're at it, please share with me any good grandparenting tips. Wendy, my hat is off to you for being here tonight. 
and I'm, I'm glad you made it and congratulations again. Uh, and I also want to quickly, because you have an amazing collection of Princeton memorabilia. So I see you've got some assembled. I, mean, I just want to see if you want to point a couple of items out. Yeah, well, I I did pull a few of my favorites together. So first, I'm tiger ready for all seasons. I have a tiger fan for hot days like it was in New York City today. And I have my warm class of 80 scarf for football games that are chilly down in Princeton Stadium. Also have my rah-rah pom-poms to cheer the tigers on and a tiger stripe umbrella for a rainy day. And my newest addition is this little bin for toys for my new grandchild because I'm sure I'll be accumulating them. I love it. Wendy, you're, you're setting a high bar there. Um, and speaking of Princetoniana, we also have a new cocktail, class cocktail for the night called a, a Tiger Sunrise. And I think uh, Karen, as always doing great communications work, is going to be putting that in the chat at some point. And just a reminder, you can save that chat and have all this. Uh, there it is. I see it. So when you save the chat, it'll all be there for you. Um, all right. We've got a great program tonight. Um, we're going to do a couple of quick polls first. Our first poll is just to see where everyone's coming from. I know we have some people from uh, out in Asia, but uh, if we can pop that poll up, we'll get a sense of geography. All right. Northeast strong as usual, couple of Midwesterners, mountain states well represented. Asia, I know we have more Asia than that. There we have, we have two people from Asia, one from South slash Central America, Mexico. All right, you need thank two you. Two more everybody. people to vote, anybody else? Oh, we got 45 out of 47, okay. I'm gonna, sorry co-host, I'm gonna end the poll and show the results. Here we go, you can see there. Uh, there's no one from the Arctic. That's strange. <laughs> Karen also reminded me, not just grandparent notes, any news you have that you want to share, Sharon would love to hear from you. So please share them so all our, cla all, all our classmates will know what's going on in your lives. Okay, now we've got a second poll coming up. And thanks to Catherine Treadgold for coming up with the question. What significant life changes did you experience in the last year? And it's multiple choice, so you can check off more than one. So lots of people spent more time with family in person or virtually. We didn't have space to ask if that's been a good thing or a little too close for comfort, but hopefully it's <laughs> a great thing for everybody. Lots of people communicated more with old friends. I know for me, it's been wonderful to be able to connect with our fellow tigers and get closer with so many more, so many new people. A lot of people picked up a new skill or hobby. Some people had a job change or retired. Great, I hope those will be some of the things that you'll share when we go into our breakout sessions. So the big winner, is people spending more time with their family. So that is a nice silver lining. We're also lucky, I have to add, that we don't have young kids because I can't even, or at least most of us don't. I can't even imagine what that was like to deal with homeschooling kids and dealing with work and everything else. Talk about multitasking. So lots of people picked up new skills or hobby. A lot of people watch more movies and read more books. Thank God for streaming. Uh, and communicated with more friends. So those are definitely silver linings despite all the hardship over the past year. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that with us. Very interesting. And I will say that I did have a 15 year old daughter at home through the pandemic who actually can probably hear me talking right now. And I will say it was a total joy, total joy. So That's wonderful. Um, all right, one, one last uh, little interactive thing before we get into the entertainment program that Cliff Wilson has has uh, pulled together for us. Uh, and this is a word cloud where everyone can submit one word. You can actually do it multiple times, but one word at a time that best describes your memories of Princeton, uh, reflecting the ties that bind in whatever fashion you remember. 
So go to slido.com if you can, just type it up in your browser. And when they ask for your access code, it is capital P Princeton, is it Princeton 80? Do I have that right? Princeton 1980. Princeton 1980. Capital P, capital P Princeton 1980. And you can use your cell phone, you can open a new browser, whatever is easiest for you. This is really yeah. fun. We, we did this during one of our Tiger Chats and it's wonderful to see people's thoughts appear on screen and turn into a word cloud. So start typing. There we go. Well, we definitely have a lot of people talking about the joy of friends and the ties that bind. So that's what it's all about tonight. Eating club parties, a couple of the clubs are mentioned with Clio, music, jazz, magnolias. Isn't that interesting? You know, I don't, why do I not remember the magnolias? That's great. I love it when people share. Eating club parties is getting bigger. That's what's fun about these word, word clouds is more people plug in their thoughts. You can see it change before your eyes. So keep adding a few one word at a time. Ah, Jonathan Fredman, the Magnolias are why I chose Princeton. Well, you're going to have to fill me in offline on where they are because I love Magnolias, so I can't believe I don't remember that. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll share a funny story. During one of our Tiger Chats led by Chuck Cummings, we, had, we talked about dorms and we did a word cloud and everybody shared their thoughts about their memories about dorms and cockroaches came up big, which was a shocker to me because again, and maybe this was selective memory. I didn't remember the cockroaches. Hmm. Oh, thank you, Karen. Tulip magnolias in front of Woody Woo. And I certainly was there a lot. Yeah. Triangle, and we've got a treat for you on the triangle front tonight. Wow, music filled a lot of our lives. Look at that. Okay, we'll give you a couple more minutes to fill this in and then we've got a huge program for you. What do you think, Bernardo? Is that good? Should we move on? Yeah, we can leave it on if people want to keep going. Uh, yeah, you not, can... not, not sharing it in the- Okay, you know, and you uh, can keep uh, going into that later and add to it. Are we going to leave it open, so, Bernardo? No, I think, well, I'll, if you want me to, otherwise I'll just stop it uh, a little okay. later, you know, later on today. But if you think of something and you want to add it in the next half hour, go ahead. And so we'll, we'll also share the final word cloud with you. Sorry, Royce, that's yours. We'll yeah, we'll, we'll send a link out, but I love the look of it. It's just, it's something beautiful to me, actually. Uh, just, just the way these different words take shape. Okay, uh, we're gonna move forward. We've got uh, some, terrifical, some terrific musical performances that are lined up tonight, courtesy of our great producer, Cliff Wilson, uh, including performances by a number of classmates, plus a special treat from this year's Triangle Show, the current undergraduate Triangle Show. Uh, and after that, we will go into our virtual reunion tent for breakout sessions. Uh, and we'll finish up with our traditional old Nassau send-off, of course. And we also are gonna have a tribute to classmates we've lost along the way. So a lot to pack in. The program is gonna last about two hours. Okay, terrific. Thanks, Royce. And we're going to kick off our entertainment portion now with an original number from our multi-talented classmate, Peter Yawitz, who is also fellow MC with Royce and me for last year's Tiger Night Live. Although Peter couldn't join us as a co-host this year, I'm really glad he'll be performing for us on video. And I understand the song he's about to deliver involves some pretty unique circumstances, which he's going to explain in his introduction. So here he is, take it away, Peter. 
right after our first kid was born back in 1990, my wife joined a, what they called a play group, which was really a bunch of mothers sitting around with their infants, not really playing, for, but the mothers to get together. When my wife went back to work, she said, since you have some free time, I'd love you to go to this play group. So I went there kind of reluctantly, and I sat there with my little infant son among all these other moms. A blanket, a onesie, a clean spit-up rag Are all packed and folded in each diaper bag The babies are snuggling in comfortable laps Big fingers and small interlacing The mothers relax as they laugh and converse While moving their kids in position to nurse Soon sweaters are raised, and then Velcro unsnaps, and I brace for the sight I'll be facing. I try to act cool, but my pulse starts to race. I keep spilling the coffee I'm drinking. I take a deep breath, gotta keep a straight face, but I can't help myself to stop thinking. Where do I look? Where do I look? It's primal, it's normal, it's nature innate. But my eyes, do I point them up, downwards or straight? Where do I look? Where do I look? I babble, I joke with these brand new mamas While I'm thinking, please can't you just put on your bras? Where do I look? At 15, I dreamed that one day I'd be this near six at once, free and unconfined Now my teenage dream has come true But somehow this is not what I had in mind Where do I look? Where do I look? I'm a modern co-parent, I clean and I cook Each gender-blind step to be taken I took I'd never just stare like some googly I schnook I learned what to expect just from reading that book But where, where do I look? Fantastic! Thank you, Peter, for that very interesting take on parroting classes. Uh, and I, I'm waiting for the day when Peter has his own one-man show off-Broadway. I know it's coming. He's fantastic. Um, next up, we have a performance by Donna Wang Friedman. Uh, no. What's that? I don't that? think that, that's not right. Uh, no? Footnotes are next, I think, right? No? I have uh, Donna. Okay, my, my bad. Sorry. No, no worries. No worries. Donna is here, I believe, with us. Um, she wasn't sure, but I think she's here, and uh, she's going to tell us about this piano piece. Donna, can you unmute? Yes. Hi, great. everybody. So great to see everybody. That was so much fun. I really enjoyed that piece. Um, anyway, so the piece that I'd like to share with you is simply called Prelude by Korean-American composer Beata Moon. Uh, this is from my new album, Heritage and Harmony, Silver Linings. We've been talking about silver linings. Um, and the album features exclusively AAPI and BIPOC artists with all proceeds going to support the Asian American community. I created the album as a response to the ongoing hate crimes against Asian Americans with the hope of promoting understanding and tolerance among people of all backgrounds. Uh, the music on Heritage and Harmony, Silver Linings, literally got me through the pandemic year, which began with an assault for being Asian and ended with my entire family getting sick with COVID. So I hope that you will enjoy Prelude by Beata Moon. Uh, this, this piece gave me a feeling of calm and hope during my most vulnerable moments last spring. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, For that sure. was breathtakingly beautiful, Donna. Unbelievable. Um, and I, hopefully we have uh, a link to your album going into the chat or you'll add it. It's really, really incredible and so powerful. And you've put up with so much and we wish you good luck tonight with your dog, Maxie. I know you're still dealing with that. And thank you so much for, despite that, joining us tonight. It really means a lot to us. And of course, your message of tolerance and understanding is one that we all need to hold on to. So thank you for sharing that here. We're going to move on now to an ensemble performance by the fabulous Footnotes class of 1980 version. To introduce this clip, I'm hoping we still have Steve Dusan with us. We do, great, thanks for staying with us, Steve. And he's also the lead soloist on this number. Hi, Steve. Hi, Donna, thanks. Uh, so great to be with you guys. This is, this is really wonderful. And Donna, thank you, that was, that was truly, truly lovely. Um, the, the, the footnotes of 1980 uh, started out uh, freshman year, 1976, as uh, Duff Ashmi, Cliff Wilson, uh, Andy Nickers. Uh, and we soon picked up um, Gary Gross and Paul Haig and John Corelli, uh, all of who you'll hear tonight on the recording we're about to play. Uh, by the time we graduated, Lynn Gala and um, uh, uh, Glenn Paul had joined our class from the class of 79. So he had nine footnotes by the time we graduated uh, in 1980. Uh, we're gonna do tonight a tune uh, that's really an evergreen arrangement by David Chamberlain, a former footnote, uh, More I See You. So uh, if you could cue it up, please. Thanks, Cliff. Good work on this. The more I see you, the more I watch and do a smileless feeling. Just grows and grows with every sun. I've become more mad about you, more lost without you. Can you imagine how much I love you? The more I see you, as years go by, you are the only one for me. Can't only be that I'm bothered by you. My arms will free you, and my heart will try. Just fantastic. I, for a minute there, I saw myself black, back in Blair Arch, just hearing you guys in the day. Except I think you guys are better than ever. I seriously do. Uh, I think good musicians get better like wine with, ye with years and just wonderful. Um, thank you, Steve and Cliff and the whole, the whole team for that one. Uh, we're gonna now actually pivot to the current undergraduate crop, see what those youngsters are up to with a clip from the Triangle Show, All Underdogs Go to Heaven, which is the first ever Triangle Show to be performed virtually uh, due to pandemic constraints. Uh, Cliff Wilson will set this uh, up for us. And, and Cliff, I just want to echo everyone's thanks for pulling this whole program together, which is, I know, very challenging and you're just a genius at it. So huh. Cliff, take us into Triangle. Well, thanks. Um, yeah, you pretty much said everything I wanted to say, which is this this um, show was produced virtually. Every kid was recorded individually, and then some genius had to patch it all together in a studio. For and they did a whole move, feature movie length program. Um, what we're going to see here is the kick line number from that show. The 
only way that we're going to play tomorrow is if you prove that you care more about us than you care about winning. Okay. How about we just go out there and have fun? Win, lose, doesn't matter. No! No, that's not good enough. You have to really prove that you don't care about winning. And I think I have an idea. When I was a novice first year in the convent, I'd just taken office, my wimple was fresh. My abbess quite wisely delivered this comment in a speech that advised me on sins of the flesh. The good Lord she mentioned absolved us of sinning and granted us passage up into the sky. The good Lord she told us forgave us our failings, but first the good Lord had to die. You want me to die? Let's lose the finals tomorrow. Oh. Just like Jesus Christ might have done. I know it might cause us to feel kind of nauseous, but frankly we had a good run. Let's throw the finals tomorrow, cause winning is kind of passe. It's not all that glorious to end up victorious, it's cooler to just walk away. I get it! You're right, coach! We're losers! So let's go out there and do what we do best. Now Achilles, he battled with Hector and dragged his dead body around. But Achilles died with him. He's also a victim of not knowing when to back down. So let's lose the finals tomorrow by margins the world's never seen. Our stardom, cause frankly, fuck Parthum, and, and this team goes under like seas. Let's lose the finals tomorrow, cause frankly, it's all just a scale. We'll be triumphant with failures abundant, like late career Joe Club and Dale. They say history is written by the victors, but we'll still go out with the best. You're right! What a tradition we can join! All the great losers coming together! Marie Antoinette, the Redcoats, the 2017 Atlanta Falcons, Jin Erso, Hillary Clinton, they're all here! You just made it. We're gonna lose the finals tomorrow, so why not lose exceptionally? No need for ovations when you close your locations, or blow a lead of 28 to 3. You're gonna kill the finals tomorrow, and write a book about the way you lost. Don't be downhearted, just get what you started, you'll be unemployable because of this foible. job this year's Triangle Club did, creating a socially distant show, their first ever film production. Really incredible. Next up is John Kermath performing a song he wrote 
John, I can still remember you playing at Princeton like it was yesterday. And I understand there's a personal story behind the song. Do you want to share that with us? I don't know, Mitt, John, are you on? Well, he was supposed to be in our breakout and he wasn't there. Are you, are you, I, oh, there you are. Yay, good, okay. Happy I am, but, but thank you. So um, so this actually was a, was a piece that I wrote uh, with two thoughts in mind. One is that, you know, I uh, my mom just passed last year and, um, uh, and a lot of us have lost parents. Uh, and sometimes I think we, we uh, you know, we forget that when we, we were in so much a hurry to do what we were going to do that we left to, you know, we left home and, and probably didn't look back in some cases. And uh, so this is a, a little autobiographical. It's also um, kind of a preview of what we're going to experience uh, kind of as empty nesters when Alex, uh, who's uh, 17 right now and at attending boarding school, uh, um, already has left the house and he's uh, kind of on his way to college and he'll be the last one. So uh, sort of two different fronts. I used to sing the song to uh, to Alex, uh, you know, at night. Uh, it was sort of part of the nighttime routine. So anyway, it's, it's a very rough version. And uh, so I apologize for the quality of the sound. John, 
John, that was absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Very touching. Thank you very much. Some great chord changes in there too. Uh, <laughs> uh, although I also want to say that I remember well from our freshman year in Holder Courtyard that you also <laughs> could plug in an electric guitar to an amp and play some pretty mean power chords as well. I, yeah. I, remember, I remember that. So, but that. <laughs> It, uh, uh, in Holder Courtyard, I used to use my amp to broadcast music because it was always a competition for, uh, I mean, uh, stereo. So uh, uh, I wish I played more guitar in that period of time, but uh, we had some incredibly talented classmates uh, and uh, you know, I wish we could uh, you know, bring you know, further, further groups of them together. Thanks. Well, well, we'll keep doing that. You know, we've got, we've got uh, years to go here. So th thanks again for sharing that. Uh, Thanks. Really nice. We're going to uh, finish up the entertainment portion of the night now uh, with a new piece from the class of 80 jazz rock band named Side One. Uh, it features a half dozen 1980 classmates, plus I think there's a ringer from the class of 84 in there. Uh, their names will be shown as the video plays, and they're going to be playing a new composition by Todd Beanie called Wait Till Tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure if Todd, he wasn't sure if he's going to make it uh, to the, the uh, reunion. I didn't see him on the participants. Um, yeah, I don't think he's going to be joining us shortly, but I don't think he's quite here yet. So I can right. introduce this piece a little Great. bit. Great, um, thanks. All of us musicians have been glad to have this opportunity to make music together, even though we're scattered geographically and have been kept apart by the pandemic. Uh, the song's title, Wait Till Tomorrow, was initially the subject of an email that Todd sent to all of us and it was regarding the status of the parts he had promised us. Um, he had promised us them one day and he said, we'll have to wait till tomorrow. But we adopted that as the song's title since it seemed to articulate what many of us have been feeling for the past year or more with so many plans and possibilities put on hold. Same, so everything is wait till tomorrow. So this reflects our optimism as we look forward to better days ahead.
was great. Well, that was really, really fabulous. And I have to say, if anybody was watching the chat, it really was like being in a jazz club, which is part of the wonder about holding these virtual reunions, because even though we really wish we could all be together, there is such a tremendous silver lining with all of us joining virtually. We would never be able to hear these kind of performances from classmates if we were under the tent. And the range of talent in our class is just astonishing. So that's definitely a silver lining. It's been a tough year, but uh, it's really been wonderful to get together with all of you. And we're concluding the entertainment portion of Target Night Live 2. Uh, sorry, but um, we've got a lot more fun in store. We're going to move on to our breakout sessions, the other two, in a minute. But first, we really want to take a moment to remember the classmates who sadly are no longer with us. We miss them all. They're part of the ties that bind and always will be. And we salute them tonight. So we're playing a special performance uh, to remember the class of 1980 and those that we've lost who are connected with us always. That's right, Wendy, thanks uh, for that thought to those who aren't, who aren't with us. And we do, we do think of them. Uh, and so to commemorate them, Gary Gross, uh, who's not with us at this moment, but he uh, recorded a special video presentation of a hymn, uh, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, which of course echoes our current class theme. Uh, and so we are gonna play that video now. Here's Gary. When Natalie asked me, a year and a few months ago to sing this song, she had no idea of my personal connection with it. In 1976, I was in a production of Our Town, the play by Thornton Wilder, and this song, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, features prominently in that play. It's a play about loss, love, friendship, family, and being reunited. It was actually the first hymn I ever memorized just to perform on stage. So here is Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in friendship and love. The fellowship our spirit finds is like to that above. We share our mutual woes. We pour our ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again from sorrow, toil and pain and sin. We shall be free and perfect love and oneness reign through all eternity. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in friendship and love. The fellowship our spirit finds is like to that above. We share our mutual woes. We pour our ardent prayers. Our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain. But we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. From sorrow, toil, and pain, 
and sin we shall be free, and perfect love and oneness reign through all eternity. That was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Gary. And all right, I know everybody is going is anxious to get back under the virtual tents to be able to spend some quality time catching up with each other. And so I'm now going to hand things over to Karen, who has graciously agreed to take over for Bernardo and host our Zoom breakout. So hi, Karen. Hi, Wendy. It's going great tonight. Wow. That was a beautiful hymn. And of course, um, the jazz was amazing. Uh, I could do that every night. Thanks, Cliff and the guys. Fantastic. So this is, um, yeah, I'm taking over from Bernardo, who had to, as he explained, jump to see his son play uh, in the, um, the varsity soccer finals. And uh, he couldn't miss the game, of course. And he's a good coach. So I hope that these breakout rooms work as smoothly as they have when Bernardo's run them. This one uh, is, I'm gonna put in the chat the prompt. So let me do that. So it says, uh, we're gonna discuss looking ahead to the coming year, which hopefully is post COVID in uh, most of our, the ways we live in our lives. What is something that you're looking forward to or hoping for? in the coming year. So I'm gonna send everyone into breakouts. Uh, it should be automatic. And again, introduce yourselves for those who don't know each other because we are a big class. And of course it's been many years um, and uh, chat about the prompt or really anything you want. It's our opportunity to create more personal connections even as we come together in these events where there are a lot of us on multiple screens. Um, it's set for 15 minutes, so you'll see um, a countdown and uh, hopefully uh, we won't cut off uh, people mid-sentence. So, all right, here we go. It should take you there automatically. Okay, that was great. Thank you, Karen. You did a great job. Glad it worked, Wendy. <laughs> Karen is amazing. Karen was going to fill in for me as MC if the baby precluded me from being here. She filled in for Bernardo. So very happy that we have a woman on our team who can wear so many hats and wear them so well. So thank you. So normally we like to do three breakouts, but we, we know we told you we were going to go until 10 and we want to stay true to that. And there's an opportunity for you to join us for future Tiger Chats and do breakouts with us then. So um, this was really such a great evening, seeing so many old friends, meeting new ones. It was really terrific. Thank you to Bernardo who left, to Karen who's still here. And before we sign off with the song Old Nassau, which is our tradition in these events and with all Princeton gatherings, I'd like to say a special thank you to everyone who is involved in making tonight possible. Cliff Wilson, who put together the terrific entertainment program, unbelievable. Uh, Bernardo Ferdman, our Zoom master, and Karen Everett, who kindly agreed to step in to assist. Catherine Treadgold, who helped develop the polls and the breakout session topics, our fabulous communications chairs, Karen Everett and John Navaria, my wonderful fellow MC and script writer, Royce Flippen, and Julie Bellet, who came up with the idea originally for our open chat sessions. I also want to thank all our entertainers who took the time to share their tremendous talents with us. I think we were all really overwhelmed with the talent we have among our classmates. And I wanna give a special thanks to our class president, Rich Becker, for his leadership and our reunion chairs, Deborah Kushma and Natalie Wargo. And I also wanna thank the entire Tiger Chats committee 
who bring us terrific events throughout the year to continue to build our ties at BIND, including program chairs, Chuck Cummings, Bill Napany, everyone who worked on tonight's Tiger Night Live 2 program and many others. Please let me know if you wanna join our committee. We have fun, it's a great committee and we welcome everyone. And we also hope that you'll join us for those Tiger Chats events, our upcoming 1980 Tiger Talks, and the Park City mini reunion coming up in September. And, and thank when, you, and Wendy, Wendy Gerber. Yes, thank you, the Wendy. The force behind this whole thing. Go, Wendy. My, my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely my pleasure. It's great to and see you. And hi, Jerome. I didn't say hi. <laughs> and uh, we really hope to see you all in person very, very soon. And now we will end courtesy of Cliff, as we always do with Old Nassau. Happy 41st reunion, Princeton Yay. 80. Yay! Go Princeton! To every heart and every voice, be there.